Hi. I want to talk today about the difference in the perspective of non-mystical enlightenment and mystical enlightenment, the differences between those two. And there's really not as much difference as you might think. Um, the non-mystical versions have really um, become very popular today because of the internet, probably in the last 10 years or so. Uh, a lot of it due to sites like uh, Jerry Katz's uh, non-duality highlights where he takes uh, information from all over the web of different people uh, quoting uh, different spiritual teachers and stuff. Jerry Katz himself is, is very non-mystical, whereas he's got a couple editors who are very mystical, so it's a nice balance. I'll have a link to it on my website under uh, this video. Just go to the videos page on my website and I'll have a link to it. But the biggest difference between the mystical versions and the non-mystical versions is whether this intelligence or this everything has an intelligence or not. Um, the non-mystics tend to focus on awareness. Their big thing is that if I can see it, it's not me. This is based on Ramana Maharshi's uh, Who Am I? If you can see it, you're, it's not you. There's awareness that's seeing an object. And so what they do is they apply this to themselves. What about me is me? Is my body me? Well, I can see my body, so it's not. And I can see my thoughts, so it's not. And so they do this more and more. And basically what happens, the boundaries of themselves get smaller and smaller and smaller. Until finally it disappears. And at that point you might think, well, you're nothing. But it's very tricky. Watch the boundaries. The boundaries disappear, but when they disappear, suddenly you're everything. So for the non-mystical point of view is that you are nothing, but you are also everything. And the difference from a mystic's point of view is that you are nothing and that God, her, is everything. What you might be surprised though is almost all traditional enlightenment teachings, non-dual teachings, are, have a mystical bent to them. Uh, Advaita, which is uh, what Ramana Maharshi taught, basically, uh, says that you're God. You know, you, you, you merge into Brahman is what he called God. That's what the Hindus call God, the ultimate God, the source of everything. But that has an intelligence to it. The uh, Sufis are the mystical versions of Muslims. The Gnostics are the mystical versions of Christians. Uh, the Kabbalists are the mystical versions of Judaism. What I teach, because I don't never followed any particular religion, is I just say, I recognize their intelligence, so I call it her. So it's the mystical version without the religion. Um, Again, the difference, though, between the mystic's version of it and the non-mystical version is really about whether this thing you merge into has an intelligence or not. The non-mystic says no. It's just everything. It's just pure awareness. The mystic says it's all God. I am nothing. She is everything. So there's a huge difference there in the sense of the feel. There's not so much difference in the sense that you're one with everything. There's no difference there. It's just the definition of what that everything is. Um, from my experiences, when I first woke up, I kind of fell into the awareness aspect. You know, I spent probably 15 years of the who am I thing. Uh, and I didn't wake up from that. It probably weakened me, my, my personal self, a bit, but I didn't wake up because of that. What caused me to wake up was the realization I had an experience of myself as a soul and reincarnating. You know, you have a, a re I believed in reincarnation though, suddenly because of a, a past life experience. I started living as if I was really a soul, and that weakened my personal self tremendously because you stop taking life seriously. If you live for, you know, forever, why take life seriously? You know, and, and, I, and I stopped. I stopped taking life seriously. So that really helped weaken the personal self. So I kind of come from both backgrounds. The um, pure awareness focus at first and then the mystical awareness. 
when I fell through, when my personal self fell away, in which a lot of my earlier talks are about, I kind of talk more about the awareness aspect, the different fields of it, you know, of enlightenment, but I didn't focus as much on the mystical side. And of course, my last video, I just talk about why I went so much to the, to the, to the, to the light side, <laughs> you might say. Um, and I'll get into more about why I see her, God, and everything. Um, but it's kind of cool to know that almost all the non-dual traditions do focus on an intelligence behind all this. You know, they say that, you know, as I say, Advaita says it's Brahman. The uh, Christians, the, the, the Judaism, the uh, Muslim mystics all say it's God. Um, even Taoism kind of, it, it calls it her. It, all, it treats the Tao as a feminine aspect. And uh, you could argue that there's intelligence there. Buddhism, not so much. I'm not sure really what Buddhism says about the ultimate state. Obviously, you, you, they call it liberation. You're free of all the illusions, but they do definitely, many, many uh, branches of it definitely believe in reincarnation. So there's definitely a mystical aspect there. So I guess what I'm saying is having a mystical perspective of enlightenment, non-duality, is not that unusual. It's actually kind of unusual that now there's such a popularity in where there isn't a mystical version. But... Anyway, I hope this uh, helps clarify that, and I'll get into further uh, explanations about her and how I see her and why I see her in uh, future videos. Thanks.